Hi, in this video we're going to look at some of the options for gaming 15mm sci-fi. So we're going to look at 15mm wargaming, which has gained quite a popularity for its um, balance between detail and ease of use. Uh, Miss Scale offers the chance to create epic large futuristic battles with a range of different vehicles, infantry and um, mechs while keeping the gaming table pretty manageable. Um, the 15mm side also provides a good versat versatility uh, allowing for large scale battles without requiring um, a huge um, area of space to play on um, and the cost of models in 15mm are much less than 28 now, for those that are interested in 15mm sci-fi wargaming, there are several rules out there, uh, and we're just going to look at a couple of them, a few of them today. Um, I, and these are some of the ones that I think are quite accessible. They're quite um, easy to play, and they bring some unique strengths to the table, depending on which rule set we use. So the first we're going to look at is Grunts. Um, it's designed by Robert Phil Robin Filton. Uh, and Grunts 15mm is one of the most popular and widely used um, rule sets on, in, in the hobby. Um, it offers a pretty streamlined and flexible system that allows for quite fast-paced gameplay while maintaining a good amount of depth. Um, the game features highly customizable units, which enables players to create their own armies with unique abilities, equipment and strategies. I mean, whether you want um, infantry, vehicles, or giant mechs, um, Grunt covers it, uh, covers it all. Now, the core mechanics are an alt alternating activations. Um, players take the turns activating units one at a time, um, keeping the gameplay pretty fast and interactive. Unit customization is one of Grunt's um, strongest features um, in its yeah, unit building system, and players can create squads, vehicles, and mechs using a point system, allowing for a, uh, a good variety of play styles. Um, it's the com offers combined um, arms focus, you know, with infantry vehicles, large walkers, um, and they all play important roles and emphasizing the use of multiple unit types which is why it's uh, a great system to play. I mean, the fact that it's um, customised will, uh, will allow players to have full control over designing units and armies, and this makes it highly versatile. Um, it's also miniature agnostic. You can pretty much use any 15mm miniatures from any manufacturer, and this gives um, players a good freedom as well in, in model selection. Um, it's pretty easy to learn. Uh, and some say it's easy to learn and hard to master. The mechanics are fairly simple and they scale up in complexity as players gain more experience. Um, what it's great for is the, the fact that those who enjoy customising their own forces to make them as unique as possible. Uh, and it's a fast-paced tactical game with the combined arms element. So the second option is Tomorrow's World. And this is published by Ambush Alley Games. Um, Tomorrow's World is, is a hard sci-fi war game that focuses on realistic near future combat it, it emphasizes the importance of tactics advanced technology and the fog of war now this rule set introduces a pretty detailed approach to warfare making it um, appealing to those players who enjoy more grounded science fiction settings it's, it is compatible with any 15 mil miniatures um, on the market and includes rules for Everything from powered armoured infantry right through to armoured vehicles and drones. Uh, one of the core mechanics is the fog of war. Tomorrow's war um, includes random events and uncertainty, such as hidden objectives and, and the unpredictable nature of war, which adds to this layer of um, realism to the game. Um, it also has what's called reaction mechanics, where units can react to enemy actions, making positioning and planning um, pretty important in a game. Um, this kind of creates a, a dynamic um, tactical gameplay, where having, uh, which has immediate consequences. So you kind of need to think ahead of it of yourself when playing. Um, it's technology-focused combat. The rules emphasise the impact of technology on the battlefield, uh, which includes everything from you know, armoured, advanced armour, uh, weapons to drones and AI control units. Uh, and it's pretty good for those that like realism and, uh, and those sort of the tactics around real, realistic gameplay. And um, the game focuses on realistic 
near future combat with those reaction mechanics which encourages a lot more tactical thinking and a lot more planning ahead um it has a pretty much versatile setting and while it leans towards a hard sci-fi tomorrow's world can be adapted for various settings you know everything from new near future to more speculative scenarios it has the game also provides a framework to create unique technological advances and unit types um it works really well for players who um, appreciate realism and that technical tactical depth uh, and those who enjoy narrative driven campaigns where technology plays a key role in, in within the game a third game is hammer slammers um the crucible and this is done, designed by John um, Treadaway and John Lambsbe Lambshead. It's based on the Hammer Slammers um, military sci-fi novel by David Drake. Uh, and this rule set provides an immersive experience in a sort of brutal, war-torn future. The game is very heavy, um, vehicle heavy with an emphasis on tanks, um, hover tanks and futuristic armoured warfare. It focuses on high-tech combat and the use of combined arms, with infantry playing a more support role. Now, the, the mechanics are based around armoured combat, and, and the game rules are designed to be played with like large tank battles in, within mind, uh, and it offers detailed rules for armoured vehicles and hover tanks, including how they will interact with infantry and artillery. Uh, Hammer Slammers leans into the concept that elite, highly trained forces can outmatch much larger, less effective ones. Uh, the rules tend to focus heavily on advanced weapon systems uh, and how they impact vehicles, infantry and structures um, on the battlefield. Now, wh why, what makes it a great game is this... Um, is the tactical tank battles. For any player that enjoys uh, armoured combat, this rule set will offer one of the most detailed vehicle-based systems in the hobby. It's really immersive. Fans of the novel will also appreciate the direct tie-in to David Drake's world. But it's flexible enough to be used with other sci-fi miniatures. Now, the advanced tech focus, this... Um, the rules will explore futuristic weaponry, making the battles feel pretty unique and reflective of high-tech warfare. It's ideal for players who prefer tank and heavy vehicle com combat and enjoy the sort of high-tech military-focused um, sci-fi games. Uh, the fourth offering is um, Stargrunt 2, um, and it's published by Ground Zero Games. It's a tactical level sci-fi war game designed for use with 15 mil miniatures, but it can be scaled up to, to sort of like 25, 28 mil. Um, and it tends to focus on squad based um, infantry in heavy combat with um, detailed rules for sort of like morale, leadership and small unit tactics. Now, while this is a slightly older rule set, Stargrunt 2 remains a pretty popular choice with a lot of players looking for highly tactical and realistic games with, with really, really rich and uh, narrative um, possibilities. Now, the core mechanics, one of the core mechanics is, is the morale and leadership. Stargrunt 2 features detailed mechanics for morale and leadership where a unit's effectiveness can be um, significantly influenced by the quality of its command. The the game tends to lean towards a sort of simulationist approach, emphasising realistic outcomes and technical planning. It's a no-point system. Stargrunt 2 does not use a point system for army building. Instead, the game tends to encourage players to create scenarios and forces that are balanced through narrative and agreed-upon conditions. Now, what makes it great is the fact that it is a squad-based tactical combat um, and it focuses on the intricacies of small unit tactics, making it a quite a very rewarding game for those who enjoy tactical um, sort of boots on the ground style combat. It's pretty narrative driven. The game is highly narrative, uh, making it great for campaigns and story driven um, gameplay. The morale mechanics offer one of the most nuanced morale systems where command 
uh, and control can make or break a unit's effectiveness in in battle. Now, this is one of those games that's bare, probably best for players who enjoy that detailed tactical games, which focus on an infantry combat and narrative play. This is more like a skirmish game than, than any of the others we're we'll looking at. So our final one we're going to look at is called No Stars in Sight, and it's uh, designed by um, Ivan Sorensen of Nor Nordic Weasel Games. Stars in Sight is a um, gritty sci-fi war game that focuses on small skirmishes between um, infantry and vehicle uh, with some mechs in a futuristic setting. It's designed for quick and pretty brutal games with quite simple mechanics that can be easily adapted for larger battles. Now, the rules are pretty flexible and allow for custom unit creation, making it a great option for players who enjoy crafting their own armies uh, and settings. Now, the core mechanics for Brutal are pretty brutal combat. Um, the, the rules focus on the lethal, lethality of um, sci-fi combat, where units can be wiped out pretty quickly if, if they aren't careful with positioning and tactics. It, it's got quite customizable forces whereby players can create their own units um, and vehicles, making it easy to tailor the game to sort of any setting or faction. Um, it's pretty quick to set up and play. The Games um, are the game is pretty streamlined in the rule in regards to the rules. Uh, it means that battles can be set up and completed in, in quite a short time, making it ideal for sort of casual play or or by or campaigns. Now, what makes it great is the fact that it's pretty fast and fun to play. The game's simple mechanics and quick pace make it a good option for players who want to jump straight into the action. Also, it's, it's quite customizable. It's easy to adapt to any sci-fi setting, um, allowing players to use a wide variety of miniatures. Um, it's a low model count, and it focuses on smaller skirmishes, making it great for players with limited time or those who prefer smaller, quicker um, engagements. So it's, it's, it works best for players looking for a quick and easy um, to learn game which has a focus on small-scale skirmishes and customization. Now, the world of 15mm sci-fi wargaming offers quite a wide range of options, from narrative-driven squad tactics to large combined, scale, combined arms um, battles. Uh, now, whether you prefer the customization and fluid gameplay of grunts to tactical re realism of tomorrow's world, or the sort of tank-heavy check-focused battle with hammers slammers, there's pretty much a rule set out there to suit anyone. Um, and, and exploring these systems can allow, allow you to find the right balance of complexity, scale and immersion for your sci-fi battles on a tabletop. Um, there are, we've only highlighted, looked at five rule sets here. Now there's, there's quite a lot um, else out there. Um, for instance, there's um, Xenos Rampart, and I know plenty of people that are using that to run 6 mil and 15 mil, mil games, even though it's just more sort of aimed at the 28 mil scale. Um, there's other things like you can still get things, for instance, say for instance, Laser Burn, that's still available to pick up from alternative armies. So there are plenty of other options. We've just sort of dipped the toe in and looked at five of them uh, and there are others out there um, available on the market and there's also a, a pretty wide um, variety of uh, manufacturers producing 15 mil sci-fi uh, and the real reason why I like it is because um, I can get more on the tabletop I can play um, more um, units, different units, different types of units. So I can go from mechs um, right around to a variety of different tanks, armoured vehicles and infantry, and maybe even a flyer or two. Uh, um, but, um, it is because 28 mil, when you start looking at 28 mil, you can't get as much on the tabletop as you would like because of this, just because of the cell, scale. I mean, to put a mech on the, a good sized mech on the table is, is quite large, uh, and a, um, a big sort of super heavy tank. You know, if you were going to 40k, a Bane Blade, I mean, that's a pretty large miniature to put on a six by four. Whereas you drop down a 15, I can get quite a few sort of super heavy tanks on a, on a battlefield in the same sort of 
area of space, which is one of the reasons why I like 15 mil with for sci-fi. It works a lot better. You can go down a smaller scale again, um, you know, sort of like 10 mil or six mil, and you can go even bigger. Um, but yeah, the advantages of 15 mil is it's a nice scale. The models are quite nice. The, the um, infantry figures are, still, are quite nice as well. You, a lot of manufacturers produce some really nice quality infantry figures in that scale. Anyway, that's all for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.